Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at constructing truth tables. Previously, we looked at what a truth table is and what the truth values are for that. So if you need to rewatch that video, this would be a good time to do that. Otherwise, we're going to get started. So truth tables, to construct a truth table, we create columns for each simple statement and negation needed. Add to it its compound statements and then the complete statement itself. We consider truth values for each simple statement and base the truth values of negations and compound statements from these. Here's some suggested steps that I have for constructing your truth table. First, determine how many rows you need. To determine the number of rows you need, that depends on the number of simple statements. So we've seen previously, if we have just one simple statement P, that we would need just two rows underneath the header, right? We would just need one for true and one for false. If we have two simple statements, which we've also previously seen, so if we have P and Q, then we have to have, do you remember? We would need four for the four different possibilities. And what happens if we would have three different simple statements? Well, good news, there's a formula that we can use to help us determine this. Um, so the formula is, right, if we're looking at the co possible combinations of trues and falses for all the simple statements, that might sound familiar. If you watched my videos on set theory, you may recall the idea of flipping coins and the possible combinations for that. This is the same idea, right? There's two options here, just like there are two options for flipping a coin. So to decide the number of rows you need, you would need two to the n, where n is the number of simple statements that we need, where n, or we have, is the number of simple statements. So if we have just one simple statement, which would be very rare, we almost never have that, we would only need two to the one, which would be two rows. If we have two, that would be two squared, that would require four rows. If we have three simple statements, that would be two cubed, which is eight, and we would need eight rows, because there'd be eight different ways to lay out all the trues and falses for those three simple statements. Okay, next, we're gonna fill in the simple statements. And I generally use the same pattern um, for when I have two simple statements and when I have three, and you'll see what my pattern is as we go through this video. Then we're gonna create any columns needed for negations. So if we don't have a not P in the problem, don't include a not P. Only include negations of the ones that we see in the example that you're given. Then you're gonna fill out any compound statements. So if there's any ands or ors, conjunctions, disjunctions, whatever the case may be. And then we're gonna fill in the truth value for the given statement. So the final product here is just going to be a table full of T's and F's. Let's look at some examples. First, we have P or not Q, and here's the steps. So first, how many rows are we gonna need? Well, in this case, we have two simple statements, P and Q, so that would be two squared. We're gonna need four rows. Then what we wanna do is fill in the simple statements. So I created a table there, it's so lovely. We're gonna start this out with P and Q. We always start with the most basic statement. So. I've had students before who would just say, well, I don't really need Q, I'm just gonna use not Q. That's really not what we do with truth tables. With truth tables, we always start with the simple statements and then we build from there. It's only one additional column, it's okay. Fill in the simple statements. So the way that I fill in a, a two simple statement truth table is I look at true, true, false, false for P, and then I alternate the true and false for Q. True, false, true, false. So this gives me the four different combinations. I've had students in the past who would do true, true, false, false, and then for Q they would do false, false, true, true. But look at this. These are the same. So that's not telling us anything new. That's not correct. You want to make sure that we're hitting all four possible combinations. So none of the rows should match. Okay, fill in the simple statements, done. Create a column for any negation needed. I need a not Q. So I'm going to include not Q. Not Q is going to be the exact opposite truth value of Q. So if Q is alternating true, false, not Q is alternating false, true. And then we're going to fill in any compound statements, P or not Q. And then we would fill in the truth values. Normally I don't fill in the truth values where I did. I usually just do it all at the end, but it really doesn't matter. If you want to just go ahead and do it as you create each column, that's fine. If you want to wait till the end, that's fine too. Now we have P or not Q. So this is a disjunction. Disjunctions are true when one of the statements is true or they're both true. So we're looking at this column here with P and this column here with not Q. We have true or false, that is true. Then we have true or true, that is true. False or false, that's false. 
false or true is true. And this will be our final product for the first example. In our next example, we have, ooh, we've got a whole lot going on, but again, how many rows do we need? We have two simple statements, P and Q, so we're gonna need four rows. That would be two squared, we need four rows. Then we're gonna fill in each simple statement. So I have P, Q, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in. So again, I do true, true, false, false for P, and then for Q, I do alternate true, false, true, false to give me the four unique combinations. Create a column for any negation needed. I only need not P. I don't need not Q. We'll worry about this negation later. So I'm gonna say not P. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the compound statements. So I have that thing inside parentheses. So I'm gonna say P and Q. And then I'm gonna to have to negate that. So now not P and Q. And then we put it all together. Not P and Q or not P. Okay, so now we're gonna do this one row at a time. So not P, that has the opposite truth value as P. So that's false, false, true, true. P and Q, this is a conjunction here. A conjunction means that we need them both to be true in order for the conjunction to be true. With this conjunction, we're looking at P and Q. So we're looking at these two columns. Let's see what we have. We have true and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. Next, we're looking at the negation of this. So whatever truth value this has, we're going to negate it for its negation. So this would be false, true, true, true. And then lastly, we're gonna fill in this final column. So for the final column, we are looking at this right here try to make that somewhat pretty. And we are looking at not P. So we're looking at these two here. And what are we talking about? We're talking about a disjunction. So this is an or situation. In order for an or to be true, one or the other has to be true or they can both be true. Let's fill this in. We have false or false is false. False or true is true. True or true is true. And true or true is true. So this would be the truth table for this particular example. In our next example, we have not Q or not P and R. So in this case, it looks like we're gonna need, do I have it? Fill in the simple statements. We're gonna need how many rows? This is two to the third. We're gonna need eight rows. And we wanna be really careful when we fill in our simple statements here. Oh, look at that. Okay, when we have three simple statements, here's my plan of attack. There's eight rows, so for P, I'm gonna do four trues followed by four falses. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's what I do for P, four trues, four falses. For Q, I do two and two. Two true, two false, two true, two false. True, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And then for R, I alternate. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. So if we look at these eight rows, nothing should repeat, right? I have three trues in the top, then I have true, true, false, true, false, true. So you can see it's creating all of the different possible truth values for P, Q, and R. Okay, after we fill in the simple statements, what negations do we need? We need not P and we need not Q. After that, let's look at any compound statements we have. We have not P or and R. And then we're gonna do the whole thing, right? Because we already have everything else, so now we get to combine it all. So we have not Q or not P and R. And then we fill this in accordingly. So not P has the opposite truth value of P, so I'm gonna have four falses followed by four trues. Not Q has the exact opposite truth value of Q, so that would be two falses, two trues, two falses, two trues, and that's it. For not P and R, so not P and R, I'm looking at these two right here. This is an and, what makes an and true? They both have to be true. So we have true and false, that's no good, that's false. False and false, false. True and false, false. False and false, false. 
True and true, hey, true and true, true. False and true, false. True and true, yay, true. False and true, false. So that's what that particular column would look like. I know that these can get really tough, so if it, it helps, I always suggest using highlighters to kind of like highlight the rows you're looking at or cover up other rows so that you don't accidentally look at the wrong row because, you know, it's it's so easy to look at the wrong thing and then to, to have the wrong truth value. Okay, and then finally, we're looking at not Q and, or actually it's or, sorry, not Q or not P and R. So we're looking at this row here. And this, uh, sorry, that column there and that column there. They're right next to each other, so I feel like I can handle this. Okay, this is a disjunction. So in order for a disjunction to be true, one or the other or both statements must be true. Starting off, we have false and false. That's false. False and false, also false. True and true or false is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or false is true. And thus we have completed this mega truth table. In our second to last example, we want to create a truth table for this statement. So start pre-planning. How many rows do we need? How many columns do we need? Okay, for rows, we would need two to the third because there are three P, Q, and R. So we would need eight rows. For columns, we need the three simple statements, P, Q, and R. We have two negations, so we're up to five, right? Because we have not P and not Q. Then we have this compound statement, so that's six, this compound statement, seven, and then the whole thing put together, so we need eight columns. So here's what I have, and I already filled in the truth table because I could. So remember for P, I do four trues followed by four falses. For Q, I do true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And for R, I alternate true with false. So they just alternate. That gives us the eight unique combinations. That's just my plan. That's obviously not the only way that you can fill this in, but I do the same thing every time so that I don't make a mistake and I don't even have to think about it. Okay, now we're gonna fill in our negations. We need not P and not Q. Then I need not P or R and I need not Q or R, and then I need not P or R and not Q or R. Okay, so now we're gonna fill in all of these columns. So not P, that has the opposite truth value as P, so this will be false, 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 true, 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 true. Not Q will be the opposite of Q, so that's false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true. Now for not P or R, I'm looking at not P is here and R is here. So I'm gonna use those two that I semi-highlighted in yellow and that will give me, so this is an or, or needs one or the other to be true. So I have true or false, that's true. Then I have false or false, false. True or false, true. False or false, false. True or true, true. False or true, true. True or true, true. And lastly, false or true, true. So that's what that particular column would look like. Now we're gonna do the same thing for not Q or R. I'm gonna highlight not Q or R so I know where I'm looking, and then we can fill this in. Okay, so now I'm looking at the green. We have false or true is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false, down here is false. True or true is true. And true or false is true. And then for the final step, we're looking at the previous two. So it looks really scary, but remember, we already did the truth values for these. So that's just a bunch of T's or F's and that happens to be right here. And this we've already done as well. So this is a conjunction of the two, meaning they both have to be true in order for that to verify, to, to be a true in this column. So since they're right there, I'm not gonna use the highlighter because obviously you can tell I'm not very good with the highlighter. So we have true and true, true. False and false, false. True and true, true. False and true is false. 
True and true is true. True and false is false. True and true is true. And true and true is true. So there's the truth table for our second to last monster of a, an example. Okay, our last example. I've done a few examples. I suggest you pause the video and try this one on your own to see how you do, especially with setting it up. So there's the pre-plan. What are we considering? How many rows? How many columns? Hit pause and go. Okay, what'd you come up with? How many rows? There's three simple statements. You need two cubed rows. You need eight rows. How many columns? We need three for the simple statements. There's no negations. We need one for the P and Q. We need one for its negation. And then we need one for the thing in total. So I'm counting six columns. Voila, here's what I have. I have six columns. I have eight rows under the headers. And then we're going to fill these in. So first we have P and Q. P and Q, in order for a conjunction to be true, they both must be true. We're looking at true and true. That's true. True and true, true. True and false is false. This is a conjunction. We need them both to be true. This is false. False and true is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. And false and false is false. Now we want the negation of this. We're, anything that this column has, we're looking at the exact opposite. So false, false, true, 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 true. And then here, we're looking at the whole thing. So we're looking at this column here and this column here. I do suggest using a highlighter or something so that you can keep track of what we're talking about. We're gonna highlight here and highlight here, make them stand out, and let's get started. This is a disjunction and or. For an or to be true, we need one or the other or both to be true. We have true or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. True or true is true. False or true is true. True or true is true. And false or true is true. And that would be our final example for constructing a truth table. Thank you for stopping by.